لهدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لو لعن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق ونور عرش أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا وسيدنا وسندنا وشفيعنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله التيبين الطاهرين المأسمين المظلومين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب المجيد وقوله الحق وهو أستق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم صدق الله العلي العظيم سلامة الله محمد الله الله I begin in Allah's name, the beneficent, the merciful, and all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this life and considering us worthy to exist when we didn't exist and to have endowed us with the ability and the capacity through intelligence and through the means of intelligence to recognize His infinite mercy. And the purpose behind this recognition obviously is for you and I to continue to receive more beneficence. So Allah is so merciful that not only did He create us when we did not deserve to be created, but He has given us the potential to continue to reap the infinite blessings of Allah eternally. And that infinity there is the fact that we will continue to grow into higher stages of life. While this is a one-dimensional universe that we live in, a four-dimensional universe that is, it's a dimension among dimensions. Upon our death, we will enter another dimension. And each dimension will take us into higher grounds. But the objective behind all these movements is simply to recognize His mercy. Allah does not need such recognition, obviously, because Allah is Samad, Allah is independent. But rather the created, when it does recognize the source of its existence and the source of its grace and the source of its growth, and of course, the goal, of its existence, which is none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you find the individual begins to benefit greater. So I begin in his blessed name. Allah has blessed us enormously. We can spend an infinite period of time and we will never exhaust his saying. وَلَوْ أَنَّمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ شَجَرْتِ نَقْلَامٌ وَالْبَحْرُ يَمُدُّهُ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ السَّبْعَةُ أَبْحُرٍ مَا نَفِدَتْ كَلِمَاتُ اللَّهِ if you took all the trees on earth and made them into pens mm. and you used the seas as ink, Allah says in the Quran, and you added seven more seas, you will not exhaust the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tonight, my respected brothers and sisters, I'm honored to be here. It's been a long time coming and I feel very blessed, especially on this auspicious occasion of the birth of one of the greatest human beings that ever walked on this earth, none other than Imam Hussain ibn Ali alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. That we also are in this celebrating mood because this month of Sha'ban, as you know, is a blessed month. Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan are heightened months by which we become more acutely aware of His mercy through the recognition of greater worship, through fasting, and of course these great events that have taken place. Not to say that the remaining nine months are not a blessing. Of course they are heightened. Muharram is a heightened month. Mm. All the months are a blessing. Allah is, is full of mercy. Allah says, Kulla yawmin huwa fi sha'an. Every day there is my sign. Every day. But in this blessed month, as you know, Many personalities were born, meaning Allah has blessed humanity with their presence on earth. And they have become the movers and shakers of society. And they are the ones who have established the right trajectories for us to follow. And that is, of course, Imam Hussain alayhi salam was born three years. On the third of Sha'ban, fourth, as you know, is Abbas alayhi salam. And the fifth, as we know, is Imam Zain al-Abideen alayhi salatu was salam. And the fifteenth, which is none other than our living Imam Sahib al-Zaman Ajallah Ta'ala Faraja. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. 
Another question we have to ask, <clears throat> and I'm sure curious minds and those who are listening probably outside of the folds of Islam or a different school of thought, may be wondering why is it so important to celebrate and commemorate such people? Isn't Allah enough? Should we not just be worshipping Allah? Some people say, sufficient is Allah, there's no need for shifa, there's no need for wilaya, there's no need for uh, any intermediary. Because intermediary in Islam, some argue, is a distraction. It may lead to false idolatry. We may end up worshipping those beings, and therefore they feel that we should avoid them. When in fact you will notice that the modus operandi, meaning the methodology by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us as a human race, by which to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who cannot be seen by the eye, cannot be touched within the five physical senses, is only seen through the heart. As Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib wasalam, states, Salawat ala Muhammad. asked him, do you, have you seen Allah? He says, I see nothing but Allah. He said, how? You can't see him? He says, eyes cannot see him, but hearts see him. The Prophet said, Man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabba. If you know yourself, you will know your Lord. The presence of Allah is not limited within the five senses. And the common sense understands that. That were Allah to be visible in the physical sense, it will be a belittling within the frame of reference, meaning in the relative world, God would become a relative frame when He is absolute. And an absolute being does not have frames. He creates frames. Time, matter, space are the creation of Allah. Allah is not bound in them. So His creation follows that, but He is not bound. But we demand that He should be bound. Whereas Allah says, مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ أَنْ يَتَّقِذَهُ وَلَدَ سُبْحَانَهُ إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكْرَهُ It is not for Allah to take a son for himself. مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ أَنْ يَتَّقِذَهُ وَلَدَ He will not take a son for himself. It's, it's a created entity to have children. لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ So the question we have to ask is, <clears throat> Allah's methodology by which to know him because see, we say, I know Allah. I'm Muslim. I do my shahada. In la ilaha illallah. And we say that as a Muslim population. Christians say it, Jews say it. But what does that mean? So you know. What do you do after that? He says, well, there's no God but one. Thank you. Leave me alone. I'm wahid. I'm Muslim. That's it? So you just declare your Islam or your oneness of God, and then you, you cease to function. The deen of Allah is a practical deen. Islam, sadly, and by the way, it's not only within Islam, I mean Muslims who see Islam. I'm talking about Muslims who define Islam. Christians who define Christianity. Jews who define Judaism. Buddhists who define Bud, you know, Buddhism. You find all of them generally define their religion as a noun. It's very dangerous to define a religion as a noun. Very dangerous. I won't go into it today. When we define religions as a noun, you inherit entitlement. And it actually paralyzes you after that. Because now I'm a member of the club. See, I've been given the passport to enter. I don't have to do anything now. I'm done. I've been basically allowed to enter. Like, you know, you would say, what will I do in paradise, you know? That entitlement has been earned, and even there we will be earning more. We say, Rabbana atmim lana noorana wa khfir lana. We say, Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hadha. Wa ma kunna li nahtadhi alaw la nadana. Thank you Allah for taking me here. But what will they say? They will say, Rabbana atmim lana noorana wa khfir lana. Oh Allah, perfect for us our light and make us subservient in, in paradise. But this entitlement business has led to paralysis in the human race. The deen of Allah, if you read the Quran cover to cover, it's a verb, it's not a noun. While it is a noun, it is secondary. 
The primary objective of the Quran and deen is it's a verb. It's action related. See, I'll give you an example. In Surah Al-Hujurat, you know, the Arab dwellers, the desert dwellers, they were very nomadic. They were wild. They had very few scruples. They were very mannerless, rough and crude. So Allah says, قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَإِنْ تُتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلَدْكُمْ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا The desert dwellers say we believe. قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ آمَنَّا Allah says, say it. He says to the Prophet, قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا No, you don't believe. لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا Rather say, we submit. For faith has not entered your heart yet. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ The condition Allah says, وَإِن تُتِئُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ If you follow Allah's injunctions and the Prophet, then your deeds will be intact. لَا يَلِدْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيْئًا Meaning everything good you do will be intact. The deen of Allah is verb-oriented, action-oriented. So we cannot sit and pontificate and say, Oh, I'm Muslim. I'm Shia, I'm Ja'afari, I'm going to Jannah. While paradise is for all creations on earth, all human beings have been created for paradise. I always say this, we are not de facto designed to go to hell. This is the misconception that has been taught, unfortunately, within the spheres of not only Islam, among Christians also, that we are all damned and doomed at birth. And very few will enter paradise. That is not true at all. Furthest from the truth. We'll discuss that some other time too. Because it's profound that the rahmah of Allah, when He creates something, why would He create it for hell? That defies rahmah. We take ourselves to hell. We want it. They will recognize. You see? When they're being thrown in hell, those who will be thrown in hell, they will say, if only we paid attention, you see, listened and paid attention, we would not be inmates of hell. And it's an interesting question in the same Surah Al-Mulk, when the angels are asking, didn't a warner come to you? When they came, we belied them. Muawiyahs and the Yazids. You see? Abu Sufyan used to say, he's claiming he's getting revelations. There's no revelation. So Allah is describing in the Quran, they worked hard to be there. Pharaoh worked hard to go to hell. All the enemies of Allah, you look at them today, the destructors of society, you think they go to sleep well? They're constantly planning the destruction of humanity. Allah says they want to go to hell. Otherwise, I don't send them there. You and I are a blast. So what's the modus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says, how would you know the practical Islam if you don't have role models? If I were to send you angels as role models, you would complain that, Ya Allah, you've sent another creation who doesn't look like me. And now you want me to follow this one? Why don't you send somebody like me? He sends him from among you. All prophets came from humanity. They are basharun like us. They are insan like you and I. Allah says, if you don't have a role model, how would you know what to do practically? So you claim to believe in Allah, then what? What are you going to do after that? If you don't have a methodology, a template, a prescription by which to follow the footsteps of somebody, how would you ever move in the right direction? Tell me, even atheists today, they refer to their mentors on how they look up to them as their guides. No human being can escape others who impact their behavior in who they are. We are products of our history and we are the cause of history because we are intrinsically bound within causes and effects. So Allah sends prophets as examples 
that we might say Allah is enough. True, of course, Allah who? La ilaha illa. But from the practical aspects of not Islam being a noun, but being a verb in transaction, how would I know how to be good if I don't have a written document showing me the prescription and a living being who's the walking, talking document? Salawat Allah Muhammad Allah. It's interesting that you find that this is the reason why we celebrate, we commemorate. It's not because we have, we want to worship people. We don't have hero worshiping. What is it about Ahl al-Bayt? What is it about Imam Hussain that touches us so much? That those who claim to be Husseinis, they get animated the minute his name is heard. You know, they cry in the months of the tragedy of Muharram and Safar, right? And the rest of the year, they have it in their hearts dormant all the time. You know, Imam Hussein, Imam, Imam Ali, of course, no, none other than the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam. Think about it. If we remove these role models, then you and I will fill the vacuum with lesser role models. It's just human nature. There's a profound message I want to share that you and I should understand. When people ask you, why do you follow Hussein ibn Ali? Who is he? Follow Ali ibn Abi Talib, Hassan. You know, the imams you follow. <coughs> Fatima al Zahra, salam alayhi alayhi, follow Zainab. Well, why? There's an interesting story when Hajjaj ibn Yusuf arrested Qambar. As you know, Qambar was a servant of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He loved Imam Ali dearly. And he never let him go. Imam freed him, but he said, no, I'm never going. Qambar arrests him, he's ready to kill him. I mean, uh, Hajjaj bin Yusuf arrests Qambar and is ready to kill him. Why? Because he was affiliated with Imam Ali. You see, if you ever want to know where the truth is, go ask Shaitan. Because he's working very hard to eradicate it. He works hard to destroy it. Whenever you see animosity against a group, unfounded animosity, like today, the Islamophobes, see the xenophobes, Anybody who's attacking justice, attacking good, you know there's a satanic element to that. It's built on hate and seeing the glasses half empty. And that's why they're so destructive. It's the way of Iblis. He says, مخلصين. I will beguile them all. Do not be fooled by the glitter of the world. How do destruction? So Hajjaj is looking at Qambar. He says, why do you follow that man? He couldn't even mention the name of Imam Ali because he was filled with jealousy. This key word jealousy, you and I need to be very careful about. Because we practice it a lot. It's a, it's a contradiction, a paradox, to claim to be a Husseini and have jealousy. It's a paradox. But many people in all religions, while they praise their leaders who didn't have it, they practice it. Because their religion is a noun, not a verb. If the religion is seen as a verb, you would never do that. You would never say he's a Husseini. He's a Shia of Ali, but he harbors jealousy and hatred and vengeance. And as a backbiter, he's a slanderer. Can't be. It's a contradiction. You cannot be. Because it's a practical religion. So Kamba looks at Hajjaj and says, do you have anyone better for me to follow? <laughs> Profound to the point. No need to get into debates or arguments. Do you have anyone better? And Hajjaj puts his head down. That's enough evidence that when you and I follow these personalities, you and I have to ask, can you find anyone better? Because somebody's going to fill that spot. So when people ask you why you go to this, you know, um, majlis, why are you going to gather in this, said, I'm going to reignite my spirit why? with the finest role models so that I hopefully will emulate them and follow them. Allah says, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, Say you claim to love Allah. Allah says, Qul in kuntum, tuhibbun Allah. Allah says to the Prophet, then tell them, Then tell them to follow you. 
فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me, the Prophet said. Then God will love you and forgive you and protect you from sin. See? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my modus by which I expect my created beings to maximize their potential mercy is by recognizing my representatives and emulating, as the Prophet says, we are like the Safina to know. We're like the Ark of Nu. Those who got on it got saved. Those who left it drowned. Or he says, be right behind us. Do not go ahead of us for you will fail. And do not stay too far from us. You will be lost. Brothers and sisters, there are 7.2 billion people, at least 7.2 billion people on earth. Some say 7.4. You and I as a community, Okay, let us say the followers of Ahlul Bayt are 500 million people, assuming. Okay, we are a very small segment of the 7.5 billion. You might say, why is the majority not understanding these great role models when they are putting their energy and effort in the wrong role models? Look at humanity today. We have a president who's a misogynist, crude, rude, arrogant, self-centered pontificator. What about our children? Can you imagine if the message reaches them that you know you can be a president of a country, be a billionaire, and be rude, crude with the worst akhlaq? Whereas the opposite is precisely what our deen is about. So I feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the community to become leaders in society. Just like Allah chooses prophets to lead society, Allah chooses imams to lead society, Allah chooses society to lead the people. This is clearly mentioned in Surah Al-Hajj, I'll discuss it tomorrow night or the day after, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you are responsible for humanity, you as a community. Allah even says in many verses, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ you are the chosen in the community. You promote good, you forbid evil, you believe in Allah. You and I, I believe, honestly, with all due respect, and I'm not sitting here simply to reiterate my own faith, but the only reason I am in this faith, for well, there's no compulsion in religion. I may have been born a Muslim. I may have been born following the Ja'afari school of thought, but I'm not obligated to remain in this school. But I will never leave it, because after having examined with a fine tooth comb, there is no religion that stands firm in logic, rationality, in practicality, that has an eternal wisdom to it, that brings eternal blessings, this world and in the hereafter, than this, this pathway, this way of life. Salawat ala Muhammad. <laughs> the Quran is complete. It's Quran, as we say, uh, salmon. Not the, is the moving Quran. Mm -hmm. Imam Ali salam, when he was fighting in Safin against Muawiyah, he brought pages of the Quran and said, there is no judgment but from Allah and the Quran is going to judge. Imam says, how? How will that book judge you? I am the walking, talking, living Quran. If you don't come to me, you have violated that book. Even the book tells you to follow me. Oh, you claim to follow Allah says, obey, unconditional obedience. Why? Because Allah says, if you don't have this template, somebody else is going to lead you, like the pipe piper who's going to take you to the gallows and kill you. That's what humanity is about. Tonight, this celebration of Imam Hussein is poignant to me. Because in Ashura, we recognize him through his enormous sacrifice of his children, of his family, of his companions, all in front of his eyes being laid on that ground where their bodies were, were butchered. But he didn't say his rhythm because of So I want to touch on one aspect of Imam Hussain, which I hope you and I will take to heart to say, Ya Allah, I love this man. May my life be sacrificed the way Muslim Ibn Awsaja said to Imam Hussain that if I come back a thousand times and I'm burnt, I will never leave you. How do I become a companion of Imam Hussain? His birth was a blessing, as you know. The Prophet named him Hussein, 
His brother is named Hassan. They both have the root word Hasana, meaning good doers. Even when Imam left, you know in Rajab, or in Shaban or Rajab, just recently, when Imam leaves Medina to go to Mecca, he leaves a letter to uh, Muhammad bin Hanafiya, his brother, and he says to him, I am not going for any other reason but to promote good and forbid evil. That's the only reason I'm going. I have no desire for power. Allah has conferred imamat on them. Who can take it? In yansurukum Allah, fala ghaliba lakum. Wa in yakhdulkum, faman dal ladhi yansurukum min ba'd. When God helps you, no one can defeat you. Allah says, and if He doesn't help you, who is there to help you? So Imam Hussein has been chosen. He doesn't have to do anything. But their nature is never to sit. They will move mountains, even if they're in prison. The way Imam Musa Najaf al Kadim was put in prison. When he was in prison, every prisoner around him became a believer. Even those people who were the guardians of the prison would be pacified by the love of our seventh Imam. That's their nature. So let's examine. But this particular behavior, I think, is something you and I should posit and ponder very carefully. It's a deep subject, it's rich. But it's not impossible to attain. It's very easy to attain. But I'd like to establish very briefly how the Quran addresses that. The verse I started in Surah Al Imran, verse 30, uh, 33 of the third chapter. If I knew in Allah Stafa Adam, God has chosen Adam and Ibrahim and his, and his progeny. He has chosen them. Allah says, Am yahsudunan nas ala ma ta'amullah min fadl? Are you jealous? by what we have given. Karbala was jealousy. Imam Hussain asked, why are you killing me? We were jealous. We didn't like your father. He was too close to the Prophet. The Prophet loved him too much. We in Islam, sadly, are jealous and we destroy each other in the name of the same name. Unfortunately, we fight. But we claim to be lovers of Ahl al-Bayt. It's very impractical. It's actually contradictory. And as a matter of fact, we wonder why our children are getting apathetic towards religion these days. And they're indulging in substances like drugs. And they're indulging in all kinds of illicit kind of behavior. It's not because they want to. It's because they have no hope. It's a contradiction. It's a double lifestyle. It's very hypocritical, many of us. And that's why, sadly, these reminders, you see, Remind them. Reminding is beneficial. Quran is a reminder. It's a dhikr. Allah keeps repeating stories of prophets. Why? To tell us that's the mode you need to follow. We tell you these stories. They are ancient stories and future events. Why do we tell you? You need a template. So, our Imams, by the way, have been chosen by Allah exclusively. No human being can choose them. By the way, the basic premise of representatives of Allah who are actual declare that they are the representatives of Allah by commission is exclusively Allah's. And the rule stands that as soon as Allah appoints them, they attain infallibility. Meaning they can make mistakes, but they don't. They don't, because Allah confers special knowledge to them, which enables them to decipher right from wrong, and they never take the wrong. You and I also practice some levels of infallibility, such as killing. Some people have never stolen, some people have never cheated. We practice infallibility, but limited. They have maximum infallibility. And Allah discusses about them and shows us their character. And I hope we take a little lesson tonight before we end. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. We've heard of this Surah Al-Nur, famous, uh, you know, Surah where is the Dua, I mean, the Ayah of Nur, verse 35. I think it's 35. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Allah Nur al-Samawati wal Ard. Mathala Nurika Mishkatin fiya Misbah. Al Misbah fi Zujaja. So beautiful. 
Allah is the light of the earth and sky. Allah is not a packet of light. He's not a photon. No. Allah says, مَثَلُ nuri, The similitude of this light. Why is Allah using the word light? Because we know light gives, it doesn't take. Mm. Allah is a giver. He's Rahman al-Rahim. مَثَلُ nuri. What is this giving? Allah says, I have conferred special guidance to you while I have perfected your soul. We, when we create every human being, we perfect their souls and we teach them wrong and right. Successful is the one who keeps that understanding pure. Right? The one who taints it will fail. So Allah has perfected that. But that's the inner. Here Allah is talking about the outer also. The outer is like a lock and key. The two have to meet. It's like when I'm hungry, I must eat. I'm curious, I must gain knowledge. It's an, ex it's an inner and outer, zahir and batin. The Prophet has mentioned there are two kinds of prophets, the inner and the outer. He said, I am the outer. Your conscience that lies in you, dormant, that you understand what is wrong and what is right, should you use it? It's your inner prophet. And Allah has blessed all intelligent beings with the inner prophet. The key is the two must meet to actuate, to animate, to put it in action, the rahmah of Allah in full sphere. So this imamah that we talk about, nubuwa that we talk about, is not a conjecture, it's not a concoction, it's fundamentally, pragmatically essential. Honestly. I don't say this you know, to patronize my audience. No. I speak about this in universities. I said, you have to talk about your role modelship. Who do you follow? And what's your trajectory? How long will you follow? This is where a very key event comes into play. If you and I want to understand the value of these personalities, you will see that what made them so great is that they never lost the eternity of Allah's presence in their ways, and they look forward to seeing, I mean, to, they look forward to the day of judgment, and their vision was eternal, not short term, meaning they never plateaued. Their iman never reached a peak. It's what we call an asymptotic trajectory. Forever. Ya yul insan, innaka kadihun, ila rabbika kadhan. O oh, mankind, struggle upon struggle till you meet your Lord forever. Meaning there's growth eternally. So Allah in this ayah talks about a niche. He says there's a special spot for you. In this niche is a lamp. The lamp is covered with the glass and it sparkles like stars. And in it is a light where fire doesn't touch it. It's deep, brilliant. One Iblis is made of fire. He can't touch them. He says it himself. By the way, anyone says prophets made mistakes or imams made mistakes, go ask Iblis. He'll tell you, no, they don't. You know how? He says it himself. By your authority, I'll fool them all. Here, the word mukhlasin doesn't mean mukhlasin. Mukhlasin means intrinsically pure. They don't become good for a moment and go back. They are born, their jism, their, their essence is pure. And he's admitting it. He's making an exception to Allah. I will fool them all except your chosen one. He knows he can't touch them. So Allah says, وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْهُ نَارٌ نُورٌ عَلَى نُورٌ Light upon light. Meaning prophet after prophet. Sometimes five prophets together. Sometimes, you know, one prophet. But imam upon imam, nurun ala nur. And God guides to that light who he wills. Yahdillahu li nurihi man yasha. And this is a similitude for mankind to reflect upon. So why is Allah blessing such people? What is it about them? See, Karbala is a magnificent expose of the essence of the chosen representative. For if they were to have died a natural death, we could have argued, how do you know? Maybe they were not that good. You know, when we have friends, if I ask you, who's your best friend? If that friend you've had, and you've never gone through trouble with them in difficult times, mm -hmm. then I would argue that it's questionable if they're really your friends. But I went to Bermuda, I went to Dubai, 
We stayed in five-star hotels, first class. He was the best friend we had. We had the best food, and we were just throwing money. This is the best friend I have. He said, no, suspect. Why? We didn't fight. Yeah, because there was no problem. You will know the real friend when you have a real problem. When there is a problem. Either loss of life. See, Allah said, وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُرْ وَنَقْسِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ I will test you with difficulty, trials. Why? Ya Allah, you are merciful. Why are you doing this to me? Allah says, how do you know yourself? If I don't put you through that, how would you know who you are? How would you know what your friends are? وَبَشِّرَ yeah. الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ They are the ones who in difficult times, they say, we are from Allah and we return to Allah. Meaning they put into focus the eternity of God and everything in between is simply vibrations towards Him. This is our Imam's word. Our Prophet's word like that. Whether you gave them gold and put them in palaces or you drag them on the streets and behead them, they never change their ways. رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعًا عَنْ ذَكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ This is the definition of why they're chosen. Allah says, who are they? They don't bargain for any price. Imam Ali alayhi salam, so many people came to bargain with him. Even his own brother wanted to bargain with him for some money from Bayt al -Mah. He said, don't bargain with me. He takes a hot rod. He says, I'll burn you if you take me there. Allah says, Rijalun, la tulheem, tijarat. They don't do tijara. They don't do business. They don't sell themselves. You and I have to ask the question, Ya Allah, how can I have that quality? How can I practically follow that? I know they're great. I know Imam Hussein was great in Karbala. He wouldn't trade anything. No matter how they tried, they put money in front of him, power like the Prophet. They said, we'll give you the keys to the Kaaba. Stop saying, la ilaha illallah. He says, you put the moon in one hand and the sun in the other. I will not stop. I don't bargain. Who are you? You don't bargain. They have this incredible certainty. Yaqeen. It is so powerful. It's unthinkable. You and I should pray to Allah to have that yaqeen. These commemorations should say every time you come here for wilada, shahada, say, Ya Allah, I want to enter these doors. Ya Allah, increase my yaqeen. Such that no one fools me. Such that when I leave this world, I will leave on, a, on the best note. Because I know why you created me, Allah. Tonight, a simple one, and I conclude. It's called tawakkal. Now, tawakkal means trust. My brothers and sisters, I can spend thousands of hours, I cannot exhaust this subject. Actually, the entire system of Allah, the foundation of it, functions at this level. Tawakkal. Allah says, وَتَوَكَّلَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Have trust. Do you have trust? We say, well, I love Allah, but I don't know. And here's how shaitan says, yeah, of course, he created you. You're a loser. So I think of all the haram you did. I cheated people. I did bad things. I looked at somebody the wrong way. She says, you see that? Damaged goods. You're bad. That's why you're a problem. And the doubt starts to seep in. So you wonder if you will succeed. Now, it's good to be humble, to have humility. But it's very bad to be self-destructive. <laughs> Say to my believers, never to lose hope. Don't lose hope in my mercy. I don't care what you've done. And the greatest proof of that is when Musa السلام, goes to Fir'aun. Fir'aun was a genocidal killer, a murderer, arrogant to the T. Why send Musa when Allah says, Idhab ila Fir'aun, innahu taha. Go to Fir'aun. He has exceeded his boundaries. And Allah says to the Prophet, Musa, when you speak to him, qawlan layina. Speak to him with a soft tongue. Why soft? He's a murderer. Don't be nice to him. We would say, this guy is a kafir, is a shaitan. 
You know, he's doing all the bad things. He's an idol worshiper. Don't be nice to him. You know, go hit him like ISIS style. You know, kill them because they're kafir. All nonsense. Nowhere does Allah ever, ever empower a human race to have vigilante justice. Or this group of people that just go behead and shoot people and kill because in the name of God they want to get closer to Allah. That's shaitan working. Musa salam, had hope in Fir'aun. What if Fir'aun had admitted that he's arrogant? You think Allah would not have forgiven him? Of course he would. But she said, but he killed so many. Doesn't matter. There's reparation for that. But Allah is Arhamur Rahimin. That's where tawakkal comes in. Many of us give up our prayers. We give up our iman. We divulge. We indulge in the wrong things. We divulge secrets. We do haram things because we've lost hope. I've had kids, youth, who get into drugs because they've lost hope. They're fighting with their dads. Their, their parents are going through a divorce. They're frustrated. They have no hope. So there's always a friend ready to give you some pills, you know. And then the next thing, they're falling like flies. And today, the synthetic kind of material is destroying this country. It's destroying the world. You know, fentanyl, they say it's more powerful than all the nuclear bombs put together. It's here. And there's a market. Why is there a market? No tawakkal, no vision, no goals, no such discussions as to why I exist. No such discussions as to who's my role model. No desire to want to follow because we've lost hope. So I end with this. When Imam Hussain and I'm touching his behavior, when he was born, to all that period of time, as you know, he was born as a prince in Medina, revered. The Prophet would do sujood, the Imam would come and jump on him because he loved the Prophet so much. He would stand behind him, the Prophet would not rise even from sujood out of honor. He would take him, he would put him on his shoulders. He would ride him. He says, I am the, the mount, you see. I am, the, I, I, am, I am taking this great person. People were jealous in Medina. How is it the Prophet is taking this little, this child? He would take lip to lip. He says, Hussain no minni, wa ana min al Hussain. Lahmuhum lahmi. Their, their flesh is their flesh is my flesh their blood is my blood people didn't like that but why is, Allah, why is the prophet saying that he says Nurun ala nur. these are the ones who will sacrifice their ways what was it about Imam Hussein that made him so powerful thousands of characters positive characters one one of the most profound was his tawakkal as he's leaving Medina you know and he's actually he's leaving Mecca to go to Kufa Farazdaq meets him. He says, you know, people's tongue is towards you, but their swords are for your neck. Imam says, I know. Mm. Why are you going? With your family and children. He says, I have tawakkal. I have trust. But they'll kill you. I don't care. We have been decreed sacrifice. But if that's what it takes, in kana deen Muhammad, lam yastaqim illa biqatli. If this deen cannot stand, but I have to sacrifice, then let it come. I asked the question 14th century, said, yeah, Imam, you are my leader. What in your character can I zone in? And every single day ask Allah to perfect that. Tawakkal. So in Karbala, as Imam is getting ready, he started to recite an ayah from Surah Al-Kahf. And it became so prevalent for him that even after his shahada, people heard this ayah being recited. The ayah is in Surah Al-Kahf. Allah says, Am hasibta anna ashab al-kahf wal-raqeem kanu min ayatina ajaba idh awa al-fityatu ila al-kahf faqalu rabbana atina min ladunka rahma wa hayyi' lana min amrina rashada. I was always intrigued by this verse. Ya Allah, why is my imam at the most profound moment reciting this verse? What is it about it? It's very deep. <coughs> Imam is showing the ultimate level of tawakkal. When you and I pray, by the way, you would say, Mustafa Musa Bilari, may Allah rest his soul, has written a book on how to make dua. You want your dua to be accepted? There is a method. There is a formula. You follow it, guaranteed it will come. But there is a condition. You don't tell Allah what you want, the way with the trinkets. We tell Allah that we want what Allah wants. It's different. But for me to say that, I must have trust in Allah. And many of us have lost it, sadly. That's why we indulge in wrong. So 
This ayah, Allah says, have you taken account? Am hasibta. The companions of the cave. Who were they? They were youth in Rome. And the king of the time wanted them to worship him as a god. They said, you will bow to me as a god. They said, no. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Isa Rasulillah. Ashhadu an Isa Rasulillah. We bear witness. There's no God but Allah and Jesus, Isa alayhi salam is our prophet. They said, no, you will worship me. So they didn't know what to do. So they prayed. They asked for two things from Allah. It's fascinating. I so strongly believe in it. That's why I'm sharing it tonight. And in the name of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, I see that energy when he stood in front of the enemy. He had that resonance. Subhanallah. That we want to celebrate his birthday with the loudest of celebrations. How? By implementing his akhlaq. 100%. There's another way. We can read all the know-hows. We can read all the praises of Ahlul Bayt. MashaAllah. Never stop it. Do it more. But it means nothing if you and I don't practice. It means nothing. Two things he asked. Allah says, why does Allah say, Ajibta? Wasn't it Ajib? Wasn't it surprising? Look what I did for them. These youth were actually erudites. They were very, very learned, but they were also from the aristocracy. They were wealthy. They had a lot to lose. You know, if you're not rich and powerful, and now you have to make a sacrifice for Allah, you're clenching on to the world that we have. It's very difficult to let go. They asked from Allah two things. Rabbana, atina min ladunka rahma. Give to us from your infinite treasury your mercy. Meaning, open up the treasury, give it to us. Beautiful dua. Atina min ladunka rahma. Wa hayi lana min amrina rash. And make our affairs right. See, Imam is going to Karbala. Many questions come up. Was it right? What did he do? How did he do? He said, I leave it to Allah. I know my goal is to praise him. Never to praise me. Never to promote me. But Allah will promote. As Allah says, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكْ وَوَضَعْنَا أَنْكَ وَزْرَكْ أَلَّذِي أَنْكَ ضَضَحْرَكْ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ It was a heavy burden, O Prophet. We sent you as a messenger, it was heavy. But we took it and, and you know, expanded your chest, made you more capable, your wings got bigger, and we raised your dhikr. We raised your dhikr. Number one name in the world today is Muhammad. Even in the UK, the British Empire, they tried to eradicate Islam. The number one name given to males is Muhammad. Salawat ala And what happened? SubhanAllah, these youth didn't know. They'll be crucified, they'll be butchered, they'll be stabbed. No idea. The king was erratic, very, very arrogant, and he could easily kill them. They didn't care. They simply put their trust in Allah. If you examine the essence of prophets and imams, it's that. Difficult times, good times. They have no trust but in Allah. They try to trust humans, and some are trustworthy, but you can't depend on it. You never know. You never know who will turn on you. Even your own self. Can you really fully say, oh, you know, I'm trustworthy? No, the individual always strives to improve their trust. So Allah said, what did I do for them? I guided them from this difficult situation to a cave. And I put them to sleep. Did they ask for that? No. Did they even wonder? No. The only thing they question is, Ya Allah, this man, Trajan, who's an emperor, is so powerful, how will he ever leave? It appears like he has this indomitable grip on us. He's got this massive hold on us, and it appears you can't leave his empire. He feels too powerful. How will he leave this world? They were pondering, they were thinking. You see? People ask, how do they turn to dust? So Allah took them to the cave, put them to sleep. 300 solar years, 309 lunar years. And Allah woke them up. That king was gone, turned to dust. More kings came, more dynasties came, more empires came. And there was this revolution. 
of six generations. Think about it. Your great, great, great grandchildren are older than you. They wake up, they're tired, they want to go and eat, not realizing they've slept for 300 years. Quran doesn't lie. Why am I saying this? When you and I have tawakkal, mm. and we ask Allah to make things right, the way Imam Hussein in Karbala said, they may kill me, but my message will grow so powerful. It will fulfill that I in Surah Al-Qasas, وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ They say Imam Sahib al-Zaman, Allah Ta'ala Faraja, when he was born as a child, he was on the lap of Imam Hassan al-Askari, alayhi salatu wassalam, Imam was holding his tender little hands, and this child was uttering from his mouth, وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّمُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُ It is our desire, you oppressed of the world, to become the leaders and the inheritors. And you will establish justice in this, on this earth as we always pray. But that comes with tawakkul. What do you and I want to die as? We want to die as people having put a mark on this earth and thawab jari that continues to grow forever. For we want to move tides and momentum in a positive direction that even after we have left, the barakah continues to come towards us. Salawat ala Muhammad wa it's a long conversation about trust. First answer to that, value things. Put everything in perspective in value. When you want to buy real estate, unless you know real estate, consult. It'll be a foolish move if you think you've got something. Never. Consult. Fas'alu ahla dhikr. Ask those who know Allah says. Mm -hmm. You want to do something in physics? Ask a physicist. You want to do something in medicine? Ask the physician. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they know. Okay? So that implies that we have to have values. We have children. We have spouses. We have community members. We have extended communities. Mm -hmm. We have money. We have homes. We have cars. We've got everything. Right? The Prophet said, Hasibu qabla an tuhasabu. Mm. Weigh it, measure it before God weighs it. See, that's Hesab. Zinu, qabla antu zanu. Weigh it before Allah weighs it. When you and I weigh it, you will know where everything lies. What's my priority? When you understand that, you and I will turn to money as our priority. Money, money will give me power. Money will give me respect. Money will make me important. It's a foolish. Foolish conclusion. Money is important, of course, very important. But does it take the top of the totem pole? Absolutely not. It's a tool. But for some people, it's a god. They even kill their own families. They tear up their own wills, their families' wills, just to grab the money. Allah says, How foolish they are. Hmm? It's the best thing is your amal, good deeds. We all know that. But our focus is wrong. I've seen adults, old age, they haven't given up dunya. They love it so much. They love power. Mm -hmm. Ya Allah, they will kill. They say when Harun al-Rashid was asked, your two sons, Amin and uh, Mamun, if they covet the Khilafah, what will he do? He said, I'll kill them. I'll kill them, he said. See? Because power corrupts. It's wrong values. When you and I put value in the right direction, and if, you're, if we're smart, and Allah guides, that Allah becomes the top, then your value system will lay that as priority. How? We need to talk about it in the next few nights, inshallah. It's a, it's a very pragmatic, practical application, but it'll come through trial and error. But we will learn from our errors if we are already in the mood to learn. Otherwise, the errors will keep repeating and we will never change. We will make errors, but if we're not searching to fix the error, we will continue to make the same error. But errors are not wrong on the condition we learn what not to do with it. That's the reality of life. May Allah give us a tawfiq, inshallah, tonight. Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, as you know, was a blessing to humanity. 
um, Prophet loved him dearly. And as you know, when the Prophet said, وَأَنَا مِنَ الْحُسَيْنِ And I am from Hussein. This is profound because the Prophet said through him, my deen that I established will be carried on and protected till Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So tonight let's celebrate by making a niyyah and dua that Ya Allah, make us follow the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt. Make us, when we name our children Hussein, or if we're named Hussein, we're named Muhammad, we're named Ahmad, Zainab, Fatima, Zah. Ya Allah, make us follow those names. Make us, our children, when we look at them, when we name them Ali, you know, look at them within the footsteps of Ali, that my child should have a big mental image of Imam Ali salam, in his room. And says, that's my hero. I want to live and die with this hero. It's not old-fashioned. Don't be fooled in modern terms. It's the reality. And nothing will take us into higher stages than this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma inna nargabu ilayka fi dawlatin kareema. Tu'izzu biha l-Islam wa ahla. Wa tu'zillu biha al-nifaq wa ahla. Wa taj'aluna fiha min al-du'ati ila ta'atik. Wa al-qadati ila sadilik. Wa tarzuquna biha karamat al-dunya wa al-akhira. وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته